Have you ever been in jail? <laughs> uh, maybe you could learn a lesson or two here how to get out of the jail. Let's, let's see what's happening here. There was apparently no Jewish synagogue in Philippi, Paul's first missionary tour, but learning of a certain place for prayer outside the city beside a river, Paul and his, and his company went there on the Sabbath and Paul preached to a group of women gathering there. This is the man who called them from Macedonia, come here. On the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who we met there. As a result, a woman merchant named Lydia, a halfway proselyte to Judaism, was converted and with her household was baptized. Her house then became the headquarters of Paul and his fellow workers. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. The house then became, as I said, the headquarters of that area for, for Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. In Philippi, there was a young female slave, supposedly possessing certain supernatural abilities. These were used to the financial advantage of her masters. Now about this lady, she began to follow the missionaries, crying out that they were the servants of the Most High, which show them the way to salvation. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim us the way of salvation. The annoyance, the annoyance reached the point where Paul could tolerate it no longer. So in the name of Jesus, he cast out the evil spirit that had been controlling her. What a dramatic experience. <laughs> I love the story of Paul's journeys. And this she did for many days, kept on shouting. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And she came out that very hour. Since her supposed Oracular abilities were now destroyed. Her masters were deprived of the income she had brought to them. Incensed at Paul and Silas, they dragged the two before the civil authorities and accused them as Jews of teaching things amicable to the laws of Rome. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans to receive or observe. This was sufficient to stir up the populace. This is the usually pattern. And the authorities against them, they were severely flogged. Oh, can you see it? And placed in stocks in an inner dungeon of the prison. There they sat. Oh, shame. How, how's Paul going to, to, to act? in this stage. Then the multitude rose up together against them. The magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them 
to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison, maximum security, and fastened their feet in the stocks. Can you see them? It's dark, bleeding. At midnight, while Paul and Silas were engaged in prayer and hymns, hymns of praise, a sudden earthquake shook the prison. What an example. Instead of cursing, they started to sing, God is so good, God is so good, or whatever song they knew. And they praised God, and there was an earthquake. Doors were thrown open and released the fetters of all the prisoners, probably by loosening the chains from the walls to which they were fastened. At midnight, while Paul and Silas were engaged in prayer and hymns of praise, a sudden earthquake shook the prison. They got a fright, all of them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. The prison keeper, awakened by the earthquake and seeing the doors opened, concluded that the prisoners, for whom he was apparently responsible with his life, had escaped. The poor man got, got such a shock. He was about to take his own life when the reassuring voice of Paul informed him that not one had escaped. Warden, don't worry, we're all here. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm for we are all here. Convinced now that Paul and Silas were men of God, the jailer secured a light and fate falling before them, asked how he, might, how he, the jailer, might be saved. Paul told him of salvation by faith in Christ, not circumcision. Thereupon the jailer took the two apostles from the prison, treated their wounds, set a meal before them, and gathered his family to listen to their instruction. Before morning, the jailer and all his family were baptized. If Paul didn't sing while he was in prison, this would not have happened. You know, God reaches people through a lot of pain at times. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? If we behave like Paul in our prison situations, people will take notice. And they will ask us, you know, what must we do to be saved? To be like you. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, not on your own works, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were with in the house. And he took them to the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into the house, his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced having believed in God with all his household. When morning came, the civil authorities sent officers to the prison asking that Paul and Silas be released. Of course, they did their homework and realized that they made a mistake. 
And when it was day, the magistrates sent the officers, saying, Let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore, depart and go in peace. How would you have reacted? But Paul refused to go, stating that he and Silas, as Roman citizens, had been illegally beaten and imprisoned without a fair trial, and that therefore the ones who had unfairly condemned and publicly mistreated them must come to make amends publicly. You know, we have to pay a price. Uh, sin has an inward power to, 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 to punish you. And uh, these people had to make some restitution. Upon hearing this, the city magistrates apologetically entreated them to leave the prison of the city. After visiting the house of Lydia and the brethren, the two men departed from Philippi. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans, and have thrown us into prison. And now, do they put us out secretly? <laughs> no, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the officer, saying, Let those men go. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city. So they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. I think she patched some of the wounds. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Next time we will join them to Thessalonica and Berea. Father in heaven, help us to sing in our prison situations. And maybe there will be an earthquake, an earthquake that would remove all our bitterness. Thank you for the story of Paul and Silas. Help us to follow their example by your grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.